This presentation is really on energetic protection, especially when you're traveling. And the first tip travel that we have is that one that Chantel really uh, taught me on this trip. Like I didn't think about it this way, this energetically that you're traveling before you arrive. And so I would love for you to kick us off Chantel on that. And then okay. I, we also need to talk about like physically when we're packing our bags and what we're doing, like how to get ready for that. Okay. So, um, when we are planning to travel is the moment that you set that intention, right? So you are already energetically shifting into that trip. Okay. But three days before we leave our higher self, our spirit, we are already, our energy is already traveling three day, days ahead of us. So that's why like a lot of people, when you're getting ready to, you're packing your bags or you're, you know, three days before a lot of people will feel um, like foggy brained or like excited or not really here feeling like, you know, they're up in um, la la land, that kind of thing. It's because you're really not grounded in the space that you're in. And so if we're already traveling forward, we have to remember to keep ourselves grounded at home. Okay. Recognizing that because it is for our own protection that's happening. So you're connecting to your energy and the space that you are traveling to. So doing that by grounding, by communicating, by really pulling in your energy here, and then sending out that protection that you need moving forward as you're preparing for your trip. And this is one that I learned from my husband and it works every time because I know it. So he's always in remind, remember, you're already, you're already traveling, you're already there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. And then I can call myself back and it just makes such a difference when you're traveling. To have that like energetic heads up, like mm -hmm. already in process. Our in spirit process. is in process. Will you share the story about how you discover this with your husband? Because I think it just is a really good clarifier. So, okay. He did a lot of, um, he did his studying with mysticism. And as part of that, um, that work and everything is you start to learn from different, um, well, different cultures and stuff, right? Because he, with anthropology and everything, but it is really about learning that our soul is all like our spirit, our energy is already ahead of us. So everything we're doing, it's, it's already thinking it's already in front of us. So as we're traveling, what we will do at home is we set the intentions, we clear our space, we clear ourselves, we will smudge ourselves, but we set our intention of having safe travels of connecting and staying connected with ourselves wrapping our cars up in bubble, Reiki bubbles or energetic protection, calling in our guides, all these things. So that as we're traveling, we're in alignment with ourselves. So it's not like um, everything's going to go wrong. We don't set any intentions like that. Everything is going to be smooth in action. You know, nobody's going to want to be in our spiritual bubble or the road is ours to claim all those kinds of things. If you're getting on a plane, you're wrapping the plane, you're wrapping the passengers yourself. You're, you become this protective bubble because you have the awareness of it. Remember not everyone's awake and not everyone knows to do these things to protect themselves. So we're constantly surrounded by people that just get on a plane or on a bus or whatever they're doing, and they don't have the awareness to bring protection with them. And so as we're learning here, and as we know, and the more we grow in it, we know to show up like that. And it's not us, it's, you know, the universe, that the energy that we're pulling in, our guides, our angels, all of it, and just calling in and saying, protect us here and now, moving forward for smooth travels. And that really will help you get to a place safe. And it brings a peace of mind. It brings in a clear heart so you can enjoy it and not feel like you're having to watch the road. And when we were in Costa Rica, the drivers over there, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> they are crazy. And I just had to trust that they know their country. They know how to drive. And they're going like 80 in these buses around these curves. And the cars, I mean, are like, and nobody is mad, angry with each other. It was a very interesting experience, but wrapping everything up, I felt safe and good. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And so for me, like it was, it's really normal practice for me to wrap my 
the airplane and Reiki and call my angels. And one of my favorite ways I do this is when I'm sitting on the plane, I'll, I'll say I post angels to the left of the plane and to the right of the plane, angels in front of us and behind us, angels above us and below us. And I just envision them circling and making this geometrical circular shape, creating this field around the plane. And there was one time, this wasn't this Costa Rica trip, but there was one time a few years back, I was traveling and I was sitting in the plane and I was, I was doing my ritual and something just felt off. I was like, this plane isn't safe. This isn't, this isn't okay. And within five minutes, they made us unboard the plane and get off. But I had all of the angels like working together to alert the people who needed to be alerted because I knew energetically like this isn't a safe plane. And I was like, oh, thank God we're moving planes. Whereas most people are like, oh no, we have to move planes. I was like, no, there is something wrong with this plane. So I trust and know that who needs to be alerted, who needs to come into alignment to make it a safe trip. It's all going to come together when you're energetically doing that work. And so that's like our first top tip, you know, energetically prepare, you know, so we can be sending Reiki to the event. That is where Mm -hmm. I failed you guys. (laughs) Because I thought, I mean, energetically and in my mind, I was like, I'm going, this is going to be vacation. Like there's nothing that's going to be coming up here. It's vacation. I like, I didn't think I didn't think I didn't think at all. Like that was it. It was kind of like a clean slate. I had no judgment about it. And I didn't set up any positive affirmations or positive envisioning beyond like, I see the water and it's going to be lovely. And I'm going to be smiling, which there was that too. And if I could go back in time and just create an intention, create a crystal grid, create um, a calendar, and giving Reiki to the dates while I was going to be out of the country, I would have, I would have loved to have brought that piece forward. Right. Yes. Yeah. And it is, it is important for us to remember that, but we get all wrapped up in where we're going and traveling and excited. And sometimes we forget to do the, the little spiritual things on our list. And like that connecting, setting the intentions, the affirmations, and then, Yeah. Because so, there's all um, kinds of ways you can bring that in because if you're packing a bag, like you can give Reiki to your suitcase, you can give Reiki mm-hmm. to your clothes, you can bring Reiki, you can give Reiki to the jewelry that you're, you're going to be bringing. You can, you can set everything up that like it's supported on this trip. And that was what I, that was part of my uh, learning experience when like, man, <laughs> I can do nothing <laughs> and it kicked my butt and we'll get to those stories for sure. Um, and so one of, so when we got there, we, I landed in Costa Rica and Chantel and her friend were flying in the day after me. And that night I ordered a beautiful Costa Rican authentic meal. And I cannot tell you, like, it was so spicy. (laughs) (laughs) It was incredibly spicy. And there is a lot of Costa Rican food. This is like the only dish in the whole country that is actually spicy. It is what I have for dinner. And I, my body cannot handle heat, but it tasted amazing. And so I just ate it anyway, because it's like a $20, $30 plate. And I'm like, I'm going to enjoy my food. I'm just going to, you know, I'll take this digest enzyme and hope it doesn't create an ulcer in my stomach or something. <laughs> right. So I ate this beautiful food. And then I woke up that morning at like 3 a.m. My stomach is on fire. And so I am like sleep deprived and um, trying to get into the the day. I went to go get a massage thinking, okay, I'll just pamper myself a little bit. And then I was frozen. There's no, um, there's no heat in Costa Rica. There's not a heater anywhere. And so this, the massage rooms have their ACs blowing and you're basically naked lying on the table without any blankets because the ladies that work there are all hot and moving around. And I'm like, I am so cold. I'll say for real. I'll say for real. Cause that's the only thing I know to say. And I'm like shivering and I'm like, I don't know how to stay, stop, get me out of here, but it wasn't a pleasant experience. And I'm like, okay. And then, <laughs> and then Chantel and her friend came and 
you know, it, nothing, nothing was, nothing felt off. Nothing felt really out of the ordinary. And that night I woke up at three in the morning and I gave myself a stretch. I woke up going, why am I awake? And I gave myself a stretch and something happened physiologically. Like I couldn't turn my neck. That's not normal. And so something was already in play of going, okay, this is weird. So then, you know, we go to this beautiful waterfall. We, we do our, you know, we're starting the retreat now. We're getting to know the participants. And then we've got a long bus ride down the West Coast to this little itty bitty peninsula where you can basically stand on it and see Panama. And it's gorgeous. And it's beautiful. And you're right on the Pacific Ocean, like literally from the yoga shala, you see the ocean. It is exactly what yoginis have been putting on their vision boards for their whole life, right? I included, mm -hmm. had this vision of what the retreat would be on my vision board for years. And then when I sh showed up, I was like, in tears, I'm like, it's just like my vision board, right? Beautiful. And things just felt things were getting more and more off in my energy. My neck wasn't feeling good. I felt uncomfortable. And so I was like, okay, let me get a massage. As soon as we got down to this new location, I was like, let me get a massage here and see if they can work out this kink. Like what is going on with my shoulder? And one of the things that came up was it was on my left shoulder. I don't have left-sided issues ever. Left is not an area of concern for me on a typical basis. All my stuff shows up on my right. <laughs> like if I'm going to have issues, it's going to be the right side of my neck. It's going to be my right shoulder. It's going to be my right, right hand. This is where my issues are. I know this about my, my body and I know why I have those issues, right? It's the trauma with all the males in my life. I get that. I know that. I'm very energetically aware. So I'm going, why is it my left side? This doesn't make any sense. And so I go into this massage and she's She's, she's white. She's smacking her hand all the time. She's doing the massage, but then she's brushing me off and smacking the energy. I'm like, okay, this woman doesn't speak any English, but she's totally doing Reiki as well as a massage. And she is pulling things off and brushing them off. Like that is energetically what is she, what she's doing. And, and so I, it gave, kind of was like, okay, uh -huh. here's my aha uh -huh moment. This isn't just physical. There's energy stuff coming up here. And so I, it was a, it was a good, like, okay, I have work to do. I need to figure this out. Why, I, what is going on? And so I, we go to dinner. We have, well, we, before we go to dinner, I think it's about dinner is about to start and I have about 15 minutes. So I run back to the room and I lie down. And I'm like, okay put Reiki around my bed and I'm going to do a quick shamanic journey. What's going on? So I do that. I, I tune in, which is, you know, it's, that's easy for me. Like, luckily I've, I've been doing shamanic journey work for years. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to tune in, figure out what's going on in my energy. And what I see is that the jungle is mad at me and rips my body apart. It's got limbs pulling off of me. I, the, the insects and these animals, the monkeys and these giant raccoon things that they have and the puma, like everything is ripping my body apart. And so I'm like, okay, the jungle is mad at me. <laughs> that was my, that was my takeaway. I am not supposed to be here. And so I go back to the table, I go to dinner and I sit down at the table and I position myself purposely between Chantel and one of the uh, yoga retreat um, leaders, because she's also, she's married to a shaman and she's a ritualist, a ceremonialist. And she, she gets this, this isn't going to weird her out. And so I'm like, we need to ask permission to be on this land. I am not okay. <laughs> I need to give an offering of some kind. And I'm looking at what I brought and I'm going, I don't have any sacred tools with me to make an offering. And, and it was, and I'm really so glad that we had someone who one could hear me, like really actually hear me and that she showed up the next morning with Peruvian ceremonial tobacco for everyone 
on the retreat to make a ceremonial offering to the land to give thanks and to ask permission to be on 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 this land and so that was really lovely Chantel I would love for you to take up the story from here so this is tip number two okay so you um when you go to a new land you you want to ask for permission to be there or have an offering to do that like you can do um corn seeds like um indian corn the purple corn you can have that you can do change you can offer tobacco if you know anything that you have rice your own um like gratitude and appreciation but you're connecting to where you're traveling to and so this way, if there's anything in the energy of the land that's either one um, isn't in alignment with your energy or there's like, you know, because land has it holds um, history. It holds the history of it, of the people, the cultures, everything in the land. And so maybe you had a past life there, you know, which is what we'll get into. But maybe you had a past life there that now you're coming to this land and you're not having this um, good energy exchange with it. So asking for permission to be there, um, uh, giving an offering. So when we received the offering, everyone kind of like scattered off and they went and we went and found their place, their calling of where they wanted to offer it. For me, there was a trail going to the Shala and there was this big tree that um, to me felt like the gatekeeper. So I connected to this tree and I offered my tobacco to this tree and asked for permission, not only for myself to be there, because as Christine was going through her experience and everything, I felt like I was more the space holder of like the journey and the trip. Um, when I got there, I called in my power animals and everything. And I felt very protected through the whole experience. Um, so at the gate, as the gatekeeper um, with this tree, I asked for permission for the group as a whole, as well as for myself and offered it. And then each time I passed this tree, I gave thanks for being there, supporting, grounding our energy because we were do, doing a lot of work. This was a spiritual retreat that we were on. This wasn't just a normal like vacation. You know, we are here doing work. We're releasing and learning and doing ceremony and rituals and all these really beautiful experiences that energetically we needed to make sure that we were safe to be able to do on this the sacred land in the middle of the jungle with all these wild animals. And so, um, so we did that. And then um, from there, that's when you started having deeper experience in your, what you were going through. Yeah. Chantel was, I'm, I'm so forever grateful that she was there to kind of, she was, she was a solid base holder. This was really predominantly like Okay. The universe is saying, okay, Christine, we've got some lessons for you to learn. <laughs> and we are going to give you uh, the perfect opportunity to learn all of them in one week. <laughs> and like, thanks universe. It was, it was pretty intense and I'm um, really, really grateful for it. Like I always come back to there's lessons and learnings in this. If there's lessons and learnings in this, then it's worth to go through the process and I'm so glad that I had a container to do it in. Like I could be done. I can come, like I was able to get it done and come home and be safe, like come back mm. into my normal life, right? So with the 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 offering of our, this sacred token to the land, it was very interesting that, you know, that day, the day before part of our group did a waterfall walk with a guide and we saw some animals and it was really cool. Then that day, the group that went to the waterfall after their ceremonial offerings, they probably saw about twice as many animals that we did. They had such a more heightened experience walking through the jungle because they had asked permission to be there before they went on it. So I just saw like the pictures that they brought back and the like, stories and experiences they told. I was like, and even people were like, I think it was because we asked for permission first. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. That's totally what happened. So I think um, everyone was getting on board in the retreat to like see this as a spiritual retreat, not just a quote unquote yoga, yoga retreat. Yeah, we were doing three to four hours of yoga a day, but there was also so much spiritual infusion within it. And for that, I'm really grateful. So the other piece, the next tip that we want to talk about is doing Reiki clearings for your hotel rooms and any place that you're staying. 
Now, this is something I, I do. This is something I always, always do. Because if you go into a hotel room, there is the energetic signature of everyone who's been there before, unless they were doing an energy clearing. So you have to keep that in mind. Who was sleeping on this bed? Who had a fight? Who was doing drugs? Whatever it was, what anxiety is in that room? It's all hanging out there. Just like, you know, if I go into a hospital, I'm going to definitely set myself up with energetic protections. Hotels and hospitals, in my mind, are kind of on the same level. They need just as much preparation and, um, and energy protection as one another. Lots of stuff has gone down in those spaces. So when I got into the hotel back in San Jose, before we even traveled down, like immediately I cleanse the room. I send the energy to the space. When we got to our new space down the peninsula, we get into our room. Instantly, we're pulling out the sage. We're giving Reiki to the room. And that helps. Now, I, I feel like sage is kind of the, it, it doesn't instantly clear everything. I think people have a misconception with sage that it's like, it's going to, it's going to work on all of the things. I'm like, sage loosens it up so that we can see it more clearly so that we can do the work to clear it. And so we're saging and we're breaking in the room as we normally would. We weren't doing anything extra at the time because we didn't know extra was needed. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we just did our normal thing, bless the space, thank the room for giving us safe, a safe place to sleep, a roof over our head. And, um, so breaky sage, like I always think like, I don't need the tools because my tools are in my hands. I've always got Reiki with me, but you can also bring things on your travels, like a small crystal board and a couple crystals and like set up the energetic protection of your space through a crystal board. So there's lots of ways to do it, but so much of it is to be energetically aware, energetically aware of the space that you're walking into and energetically aware of your own energy and what may be feeling off. What do you want and to remember in what your intentions are? Mm -hmm. So if you are bringing tools along with you, yes, we we're all Reiki, right? We can provide that in Reiki the room. But if you're one that feels that you connect to sage, you connect to crystals, all that, you have to know what your energy body is, what your intentions are and what it is that you need, what your tools are, right? So what you use at home, you can travel with. If you use a pendulum, if, you know, I work with selenite a lot, like that, the, like my go-tos, they travel with me. So I'll take a stick, a stick of sage, or I'll have, um, my, like, I'll have a deck of cards with me. I bring like my pendulum with me and, um, a selenite to Costa Rica was a little less just because of like, we could only travel with so much, but make yourself a little tool bag of things that like you bring. So when you are up against anything that doesn't feel comfortable for you, you know, you have the things that you can rely on and always with Reiki, but you're also bringing in the intentions of the other things that you work with. And that became very like, um, it was very useful for us because we were able to use all the tools that we had to keep clearing ourselves and doing the work that we needed to do. Yeah. So back to the story. <laughs> so I, so we, we gave our, we asked for permission. The we've cleansed the energy of our room and my neck is still really wonky. It's still really not happy. And part of it is that so here's, here's one of my other big tips. It's not even on our, our, our sheet that Chantel and I made. If you know that something is going on, it is okay to ask for help. I don't know how much, how, I mean, how important that is. Like, had I kept this to myself and try to deal with it on my own, I would be in a much different position right now. Right. And so Part of it, as soon as I had the energetic understanding that there was something going on in my energy field and my typical tools of giving Reiki to the room, giving, asking for permission from the land, all of these things, they weren't up to snuff. They weren't up to par for whatever reason, I'm still feeling energetically under attack and the, the jungle, not feeling it. They don't like me here for whatever reason. And so when I'm, I, so what I do, what I did was instantly start messaging my healers 
everyone's got to have that handful of people that they call, like, they call out to, right? I wanted someone outside of the jungle who could see this, this space and where I was in it without being inside of it. So Chantel was giving me Reiki and like doing some energy stuff, but I was like, I, I need everybody. So I called to my, um, I like to think of her as Reiki Cafe's guardian. <laughs> like that's what she is to me. She gives me regular Reiki sessions back home all the time. And she is one of our advanced shamanic Reiki practitioner training student graduates. And so she's got fantastic tools. She's been working with me for probably over six or seven years. And so the first thing I do is like, she was my top of the list. I'm like, I need you to do an energy scan on me. I need you to energetically check out what is going on here. There's something going on. I need you to do a session as soon as possible. So she did the session that night. I also texted a graduate of ours and she was also a massage therapist and is also trained in cranial sacral work because I can't freaking move my neck. And I'm like, I need a distance cranial sacral session. I need that as soon as possible. Also, while you're there, check out the energy. Let me know what you get. So I'm not giving them a lot of information. I'm not, I'm just giving them enough that to know like, this is abnormal. I need you to help me. And so I was having those sessions done while I was also tuning in myself, while Chant Chantel was tuning in and trying to figure out what's going on here. Right. So part of it was that there was, this was a very layered situation. I don't think anyone would normally have a situation like this, but it makes a really good teaching tool. So I want to also put that out there. I don't want to scare anyone from traveling or landing on new lands. Like that's not the intention of this at all. And when I was there, it really brought up a lot of past life stuff because I felt there was, there was a unaware unknowingly, I felt like I had a veil put over my eyes and I couldn't see everything so clearly. And in that, I felt that I could only call guides with me who were of the jungle. So the only guy, the only power animal I felt like I could call upon was spider and snake because they also exist in the jungle. So I have snake doing everything she can. <laughs> And everyone, everyone I called out for help from, all of them was like, Snake is with you. Snake is really helping you right now. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Snake. So Snake was with me and Snake like wrapped around my neck to try to protect whatever was going on here. I had Snake like settle at the back of my neck, trying to protect that space because those were the primary areas that were really physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, like all of it. That's what it felt like was under attack. And so part of myself was making myself energetically small. And this was the biggest number one lesson of being in the jungle was you never have to, you never have to make yourself small. You are always available to call in all of your power animals, all of your spirit guides, all of the angels, all of the ascended masters, whoever you normally work with will follow you wherever you go, wherever that those shadows and those valleys are, you call upon them. And for whatever reason, I felt like this past life memory of being a part, not only of there is this like shamanic shaman battle, like energetic battle. Like I was from the wrong tribe and I'm landing on this land, not supposed to be there because I don't belong to this tribe. And we have attacked each other before there was that layer, but I could also remember the memories of the conquistadors coming in and attacking all the indigenous people and going, I don't want to have some angel that looks like some Christian thing that is going to upset the jungle. Like I didn't want to bring that memory. And that was all this veil that was coming over me to make myself energetically strong, small. So one of my sessions that I had with my, uh, Reiki, shamanic Reiki practitioner, that distant session was like, she's like, Oh, we had the whole animal kingdom show up. Everyone came magpie rat pack. We took, we cleared up hundreds of curses. Like we were doing all kinds of work. Like, and she left me like a 10 minute voice memo of all of the work that she had done. 
But my takeaway was like, she called everyone. She called everyone. And I'm like, I can call everyone. So I'm like, that was my big turning point in the trip of going, I can call Archangel Michael. I can call Archangel Uriel. There's no one who I can't call. I'm ready to gear up. I'm ready to power up. I'm calling in everybody. And in calling in everybody was able to like, no one can mess with me. I'm done. I'm done with this. Let's go. Who Who's trying to attack me today? Let's let's see me face to face. Let's, let's do this thing so that I've got all this team. You want to mess with me? Then you're going to mess with everyone here, including Shiva. Shiva showed up for me, which is really interesting. Shiva normally doesn't show up for me. Like it's not one of my normal guides, but you know, notice how Shiva also has a snake around its neck. I think it liked that I was wearing a snake around my neck. And so from there, like, remember that we have free will. If I was choosing to make myself small instead of making myself energetically big. I was trying to be, to make myself small, to be indiscriminate, to, to not be noticed by the jungle instead of getting myself energetically huge to go, it doesn't matter what you have against me. This is who I am and I'm not to be messed with. And so I had to come into my power and remember my truth. And so that was overall the biggest lesson of being <laughs> of being in Costa Rica. Yeah. And, and to say that watching her go through it, she absolutely had the emotional, the physical, the mental, like she, like she did, she went small, like the tears, all the emotions, everything that went with that to when she finally empowered herself. And it was night and day. It was like, she was like, I'm ready to go home. I can't do this anymore. But then when she called everything in, everyone in and knew, why am I doing this? Why am I not calling in my team? Why am I not empowering myself? Why am I not doing my Reiki and, and expanding my own energy? Once she did that, there was that huge like night and day. Absolutely. And so remembering that to be empowered wherever you are, you know, because when we do create the space where we make ourselves small, we're ready. Like we can be under attack from at any point, but once we're big and we know who we are and we stand in our truth and we stand in our power, then with free will and all of that, it can't, the attacks can't come because we are, we have this huge field around us that doesn't allow that to come through. And then we can be energetically wise versus trying to make ourselves small, trying to fit in, trying to, you know, all these things. And it's like, no. So even if you're in meditation, expand your energy out, recognize that in your, in your life and how you're showing up. Cause if our energy is like this, you know, yeah, it's going to be easier for those attacks to come in, um, versus being expanded and being big. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like I, it was an, it was a night and day energy within me as well. Like I could see myself growing my energetic wings, flying above the peninsula with my whole team and just being like, you want to mess with me? Let's go. Let's see what you got <laughs> because it's, you can't mess with me. And it, it was just a full energetic shift. And that's when things really started to change because I wasn't willing, like my free will was saying, I'm not available for this. I'm not available for this. So there was my low point of going, I'm ready to go home. Like, this is, this is too much. I can't handle this. And she until over on the bed with her, her cards, you know, she does readings. If you guys haven't tried a reading with her yet. You should book her. She's amazing. Right. So she's over on the bed doing the cards. She's like, yeah, you're going through all kinds of shit. Oh my God, this is horrible, but there's going to be a lesson and you're going to learn it. And then, and then you're going to share it with the world. <laughs> That's like, okay, it's going to turn around and it has a reason and purpose. And that was all I needed to like get through to the other side was Chantel's reading that night when I just felt like giving up. So yeah. ask for help, get the sessions, get the readings, like do the things. Um, I, I feel, I, I definitely am one who I don't hesitate anymore on that. I, I'm like, if I need, you know, massages every day and energetic session, healing sessions every day until I get through something, I'm going to, I'm going to 
pull out the credit card <laughs> because it's worth it. I'm like, no, no, no. I could be in this for a month. I could be this in for two months. I could be in this for a year, whatever is going on. We are going to put it on hyperspeed and do radical self-care and say yes, yes to the help, yes to the support until I feel energetically solid. And it's so important. It's so important. And the entire group, there was like, what, 17, 18 of us, they witnessed Christine shifting from being, not that they knew, nobody else, like oh, only a few of us knew what was going on because it was kind of like a split group. We had the yogis and then we had us that were energy workers and they don't do what we do. They don't know what we do. So we weren't sharing that. We're not trying to like freak anybody out, but we could see in her, like there's this illness kind of thing that was happening. Like she was sick there. She wasn't feeling well to like, all of a sudden she's empowered, but because she knows she has a team of people, not just a spiritual team, but a team of people that she can call on and say, yes, can you do this work for me? I need to know what's going on. And that's why being able to journey and being able to really tune into your Reiki um, guides and your Reiki energy is so, so important for all of us to be strong Reiki practitioners, because when we can do that and do that distance healing for somebody, and that is such a powerful gift to be able to offer and, and to say, okay, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're across the world, I got you. And I'm going to send you a message in a little bit and tell you what's going on. And literally the entire team, we all were coming up with pretty much the same, same thing. Okay. And it was like putting the puzzle pieces together to figure out what was going on with her. Oh my gosh. And it was a puzzle. Like, and it was so funny because one person would be like, you have a, um, you have a, what was it? it? It was a thorn in your neck. And then the next person would be like, you have a dart in your neck. And then the next person would be like, you have a, a, a bite on your neck. Like everything energetically, like they were picking up on the exact same spot for the same kind of wound, but it always is perceived by the practitioner the way they're going to understand it. And mm -hmm. so it all meant, meant, it all was the same thing. It wasn't that I had a dart and a, and a vine with thorns and, you know, a, a, a bite of some kind. It was, that was all energetically, symbolically of the same thing that was happening and going, okay, what's going on here? And, um, it was at one point I had the, the retreat leader. I was like, look, I can't move my neck. I'm done. I'm so close to being like, send me home now. And she finally came up to the room and was doing work on my neck, like the body work. And it was cross-referencing. And so meaning like she would push on my left shoulder and I'd feel it in my right. She'd push on my right shoulder. I'd feel it on my left. It was cross trant, like speaking to each other. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, this is in my soul fabric because I, and this is something I teach in our advanced classes about how to understand the soul fabric and the fibers of the fabric and the threads of the fabric. And so I could feel that this was also a past life. And so there was so much work being done in that session when I figured out there's a past life connection here and I need to remove this because it's cursed and it's like causing all these issues. And it was basically lit up that, that thread in my soul fabric was inflamed. Think of it that way. It was fully inflamed because of the memory triggers I was having by being in the jungle, by being in this place, by having these spirits that were coming in to try to attack me because I was on their territory. Energetically, I wasn't meant to be there, right? So having this, let me calm my soul fabric down. This is part of who I am is being, having this past life. I can heal that. I can heal all the pieces of me, past lives, future lives, current life, like we can do it all. And so being able to step in that, that knowingness of like, I understand it. And so it really was like puzzle pieces, puzzle pieces, puzzle pieces, puzzle pieces, and going, how do they fit together so that we can take care of it and heal it on a, you know, across the board. Right. And so it really was very multi-layered and to, look at it like that. Sometimes things come together going, okay, there's this past life stuff and there's this entity in the room trying to attack you. And you have this piece over here coming on. And I'm like, there's a lot of pieces. And I've been in this work for a long time. I'm going to ask for the help that I need. I know I'm going to get over this. And the number one thing that made me like help me supported me switching my energy was going, I've got my team. 
I've got my team. My team is here. I can now move my neck. I'm okay. I'm physically all right. Let's level it up. Let's power up. Let's bring on the team. And they're not going anywhere. So when I would go to bed, from that point moving forward, I put a Reiki bubble around my bed, like a sleeping bag. And I would arm my bed with Lord Shiva because he's been showing up for me during this trip. I had Archangel Michael. I had Archangel Uriel. I'm like, you guys are just going to circle my bed. Nothing can enter into my, this bed space. Like I had to make my energetic awareness be smaller so that I could contain it and be aware of it. Guess what? I slept through the night for the first time on that whole trip that night. I was like, okay, we figured it out. We, we've got this. <laughs> and recognizing that this was there, that I needed to be in fully in my, my energy. Right. Yeah. yeah. And not to mention that we had these howler monkeys that I don't know if you know what they are, but they start screaming at 440 in the morning to wake you up. So none of us are really like getting all of this sleep because we were hearing all these new sounds and all these things that were coming in, all these different animals that we've never heard before, which was a message in itself of what was entering our psyche and our you know subconscious at that time. But it was very interesting. But for the, that was the night where there was three of us in the same room and we woke up the next morning. We're all like, ah, oh, we're good. Like we slept good. <laughs> and that was our first night of like, I did it. And so it's just showing the importance of being able to do this work for ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And so for another travel tip, be sure that before you leave you and before you take anything away from nature. So if you're like, I found the cool seashell or I found this cool stick or I want to bring some sand home or whatever it is, ask for permission. I love Chantel to kind of get into this because I love her ritual around this. So I'm a collector of sand and stones and driftwood and whatever. I collect things and then I make um, little kind of like mini altars of where I've been around my home. But I, what I do is um, if I don't have like a physical thing to offer the earth for what I want to take home with me, I sit with it and I ask I ask her, I talk to her and ask her what it is I can, I can take. Is it okay if I take sand? Is it okay if I take stones and driftwood and all these things? And so I was sitting with the water and I had my feet in the waves and I was asking about it. And it was like, so the message I got was I could take as much sand as I wanted, but I could only take three stones. And I was like, okay. And so I went and I got a bag and I took like about this much sand. And then I picked my three stones. And the moment I got my three stones, the next thing I saw was a heart-shaped piece of wood. And I was like, oh, like, thank you. Like I was giving gratitude to her for sharing with me something that I collect. I collect um, heart rocks. I collect anything that shows up in nature that is shaped like a heart, leaves, stones, wood, whatever it is. And so because I honored her, and what I was taking home with me by limiting it to the three. And I wasn't like, well, I'm going to take five because, oh, look at, I found another one I really like, you know, she was gifting me something that I collect naturally. And so then I found some driftwood. There was some really cool things that was just catching my eye and I would ask permission for it. And then the things that I was leaving was that gratitude and the energy and the love that I was feeling for the space that I was in and the connection that I had with her. And so it only takes moments to tune in to Mother Earth, to tune into the, the nature around you and to give your energy to say thank you and your, grat your being gratitude and all these things, right? but she gives so much back to us when we pay attention to her. And sometimes, a lot of times as people, we don't tune into nature. You know, we kind of just take it for granted. You go outside and, and we get annoyed. Like I'm in California, we've been raining for like six days straight. Now that could be totally annoying if you're not used to it, right? It's wet, we're flooded and it's out, but you know what? I enjoy going out there and knowing that that water is coming. It's cleansing our streets. It's watering our plants and our nature and our trees and everything that we need. So it's a natural cleansing that's happening in my state right now. And, and I think it's really important for us to be able to connect and see what nature has to offer us and why 
all of the elements come and all the things. And so if you are going to take something that's natural, remember that. But I also want to say that try not to take things that the animals themselves are going to use. Like mm -hmm. if you like shells and stuff, you know, there's crabs that are going to use those for a home, those kinds of things. Like we want to be like ethical in the things that we're taking. Um, but other than that, it's giving, like I said earlier, uh, corn, tobacco, anything that you have to offer, you can do that. Um, what was the next thing that we had? We gratitude, did. gratitude, gratitude. Yep. Very much being thankful, just having a thankful heart when you're on your journey, wherever it is that you're going, whether you're visiting family, you're taking a journey, like a vacation outside of your state, or you're just your town alone, like just having that grateful heart, because that's the energy in which you're traveling in. Even when frustration like shows up, even when there's things like road rage and things that happen on the road and in traveling, or you're getting hung up at the airport, whatever it is showing up with gratitude is really going to smooth out your trip. And that was something like, and always have in the back of your mind, why am I being held up? Or why isn't that working? Am I being saved from something bigger? You know, maybe there's an accident or maybe there's somebody you're not meant to meet or whatever it is. But I always try to take with me that, that idea in the back of my, my mind too. Like I'm protected. So I don't need to worry about any hangups or people I'm meeting and having um, gratitude for those who are serving, like serving you. So if you're being, you know, like you're the restaurants, the cooks, the waiters, the waitresses, all these people having gratitude for the service that you're receiving as well. So it's really just being an open hearted being and, and showing up in your full authentic self and being heart centered. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I, it was overall, I'm so grateful for the trip. I it really was the perfect book outline <laughs> for everything that I want to teach. So, you know, in a year, wait for that to come out. Um, I'm going to be spending some time um, really fleshing out everything that happened and using it as a teaching tool because there was so many lessons and we only actually covered a few of them here. So um, I do want to add one more because it's the closing of all of it yes. is when we leave your hotel room, you also want to, um, you want to call your energy back from the space mm -hmm. and you want to leave whatever, like you want to leave thanks and gratitude to the room, but you're calling your energy back and you're leaving what, whatever energy is not in service for you there but you're leaving it with love and gratitude and all those things, but you're calling yourself back. If you want a sage, if you want a Reiki or whatever you're doing for the space. But before we left, we pulled all of our bags out. We put them on the deck and the three of us, one by one, we went in and we did our clearing of our energy, the clearing of our space, giving thanks for it. Gratitude for being a sacred, um, a sacred container for us to do all the work that we were doing for all the healing that we did for the experiences that we had. And then we were able to close that door knowing that it was completely cleared for the next people to come in. So giving that like some thought when you're going and you're traveling, like we just did all this work. If we didn't clear our space and you were the next one coming in, you would be getting so much energy <laughs> off of the work that we had done there. And that's why it's so important for us to remember this. And I wish everybody in the world knew to do this stuff, but you know, in time it'll all spread and people will know, but um, just, you know, food for thought in the future is to clear the space when you enter and then call your energy when you leave. Absolutely. I love ending on that note. And thanks everyone for hanging in there with us for this really intensive conversation. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.